Hello everyone. How are you today? Welcome to Tall Tales with Alex. Your gateway into a universe of adventure and discovery. It's so great to have you with me for today's journey. We're going to use our imaginations today. So get ready to think up all kinds of amazing things. Maybe you could keep using your imagination to do some drawings of our adventure today. I would love to see what you create. In fact, this story is a particularly good story for drawing. To the parents, guardians and teachers, you can find me at Tall Tales Alex on Twitter and Tall Tales with Alex on Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe to be the first to find out when a new story has been uploaded. Now, let's dive into a world of imagination. I want you to imagine the front of a shop. Welcome to the magical snow globe shop of Mrs. Cardinal. It's a very tall and thin shop. The bricks are deep red. There are two big windows on either side of the front door, and in these windows are hundreds of tiny snow globes. Hanging above the door is a sign. It's old and battered. The paint is faded from all the years the shop has been there. The sign reads, Magic awaits. Let's walk in through the front door. Mrs. Cardinal's shop has so many snow globes on so many shelves that you can't even see the back of the shop. And the shelves are so high that you can't even see the ceiling. Nobody knows where Mrs. Cardinal came from or how long the shop has been there. Because the shop has been there longer than anyone has been alive. Even though the shop is older than anyone knows, there isn't a single cobweb or bit of dust to be found. If you tried to count all the snow globes, you would be there for the rest of your life. Mrs. Cardinal's snow globes are magical, and every single one is different. They're magical because as we look at them, the snow globes take us to an amazing world far away from the one we're in now. Keep your eyes closed and let's walk over to a shelf and pick up a snow globe. Wow! That's such an amazing snow globe! Let's get a closer look and see what's inside. Inside this globe is a young girl with her hand held high above her head. In her hand, she's holding a crayon. Around her waist is a belt, kind of like a tool belt, but full of crayons. In her other hand, she has lots of paper, full of drawings. In the air, there's tiny little dots of every colour you can imagine that swirl around her like a stormy rainbow. This is the tale of Cece and her magic crayons. Cece loved to draw. Her bedroom was full of pieces of paper with drawings she'd done. She drew incredible and fantastical things, and she drew them in so many wonderful colours. Cece had only just moved into her new house, but she had already covered almost every bit of her room with doodles and scribbles. Her favourite drawing that she created was of an astronaut floating in space. She had drawn it for her friend Jackson, who was coming round later that day to see her new house. Jackson loved space and astronauts. He and Cece were best friends and used to live on the same street. He was sad when Cece moved house, but now it made it an extra special treat when he came round to visit her. Cece, don't forget that you need to tidy your room before Jackson comes over to play, her mummy called from downstairs. Cece looked around at all the pieces of paper that were lying in her bedroom floor. She'd been drawing all morning and she had completely lost track of all the drawings she'd done. She'd drawn so many amazing things. There was so much paper you couldn't even see the floor underneath. She hurried around the room, scooping up sheet after sheet of paper and bundling them into her arms. She walked across the room, struggling to hold onto all the bits of paper as, oh, no, page after page spilled onto the floor. Where could I possibly put all these drawings, she thought to herself. She decided that the cupboard in the corner was the best place. Lots of Cece's things were still in boxes from when they moved, so she hadn't really had a look in the cupboard yet. She opened the door and had a little look inside. It was very dark. She squinted her eyes to peer in. 
she decided she would put the bits of paper right at the back of the cupboard. She could sort them out properly when Jackson was gone. So she leaned inside, right to the back, and put the papers down, when her hand brushed something. She reached her other hand inside to see what it was. It was square and hard. She lifted it up. Oh, it was quite heavy. She pulled it out from the back of the cupboard and took it into the middle of her room to get a better look under the light. Cece had found a wooden box covered in dust. There was so much dust that Cece thought it must have been sitting at the back of the cupboard for years and years. She took a deep breath and blew the dust off the top of the box. Dust was kicked up into the air all around her. She (coughs) coughed and spluttered, waving her hand in front of her face to try and get rid of it and stop it going into her eyes. When the dust had settled, she rubbed her face and looked down at the box. The wood was very deep brown. It had all kinds of wonderful carvings on it. She opened the lid of the box, and inside she found hundreds and hundreds of crayons. There were crayons of every colour you could imagine. There were different sizes of each crayon. Some were tiny, and some were enormous. Cece couldn't believe it. This was the most wonderful collection of crayons she'd ever seen. Jackson was going to be so impressed. She knew she needed to tidy her room before he came over, but finding a magical-looking box of crayons was far too exciting. She ran over to her desk and picked up the biggest art book she had. She placed it down on the floor and had a look inside the crayon box. Oh, there were so many colours to choose from. I want you to imagine the box. Can you see all the colours? How many colours can you see? The colours are so bright, aren't they? It looks like a rainbow in a box. Cece reached inside the box and pulled out an orange crayon. She leaned down to the paper and drew a bird. It was the brightest orange Cece had ever seen. The bird she drew was little, with small wings, which seemed to move. Cece rubbed her eyes. She must have been imagining it. Drawings don't move. She looked back down at the picture of the bird, when the wings began to move again. It was just a small movement at first, but they slowly began to flap more and more and more, until suddenly the bird lifted off the page and flew up into the air. Cece couldn't believe it. The little bird whizzed around the room above her head, diving this way and that way. It swooped down and flew around Cece, who spun around in circles, trying to watch it until she became dizzy. It flew down onto her windowsill, where it hopped around, giving a tweet and a chirp. Cece walked over and held her hand out to it. It gave a little look at her hand, before hopping on. She brought it up to her face to get a better look. It was amazing! a bird made entirely out of crayon. The drawing she had made in her art book had come to life. Cece knew birds weren't meant to be trapped in a room, so she opened her window and put her arm outside. The light of the warm sun outside fell on the bird and Cece could see just how brilliantly orange it was. The bird seemed to take a moment to look around before it flapped its wings lifted off into the air, rising higher and higher, until it disappeared into the distance. And as Cece watched it fly away, she heard the doorbell ring. Jackson was here. She couldn't wait to show him what she'd found, so she rushed out of her bedroom door and downstairs. Hello, Cece, said Jackson's daddy. Hello, she replied. Sorry, but there's something really important that I have to show Jackson. She took Jackson's hand and said, follow me. Well, whatever it is, it must be very cool, said Jackson's daddy with a smile. And the two hurried back upstairs to Cece's room. When they got upstairs, Cece closed the door behind them. Jackson looked around the room. Well, what do you want to show me? he asked. Look over there, in that box, said Cece. Jackson peered into the wooden box. 
Wow! There are so many crayons, he cried, and so many wonderful colours. I don't think I've ever seen this many crayons in my life, let alone all in one box. You will be able to draw all kinds of cool things with these. Cece gave him a smile and said, But that's not even the best part. She reached inside and pulled out a dark blue crayon. Watch this, she said, and began to draw an astronaut. The astronaut had a round helmet and a suit with lots of buttons and tubes. When she finished the final details, the astronaut began to lift slowly off the page, floating upwards. He was only a little astronaut, about the size of the piece of paper from Cece's notebook. The little space explorer floated further up and around the ceiling. She turned to Jackson, whose mouth was wide open in amazement. He couldn't believe what he was seeing. He loved astronauts, and now he was seeing a very small one floating right in front of him. Houston, we appear to have a problem. Space seems to be rather smaller than we thought, said the little astronaut. In fact, it appears to be a lot like a young child's bedroom, not at all like our computer predicted. However, I do appear to have found intelligent life in space, and it appears that aliens look like large children. And there seems to be a ceiling to space, too. Control, do you... do you copy? Jackson laughed and said, We're not aliens, and you're not in space. Cece waved at the little astronaut and said, My name is Cece, and you're in my bedroom. Space is outside, not in here. The little astronaut floated up to the ceiling and began to spacewalk along it upside down. Spacewalking is a bit like normal walking, but when you take each step, you float just a little, so it looks like you're bouncing along. He bounced over to the window and looked outside. How will I get there? He asked. Oh, I know, I've got an idea. Jackson, you like astronauts and rockets. You know what a spaceship should look like. Why don't you draw this astronaut a rocket so he can go into space? So Jackson pulled out some crayons and began to scribble away on a piece of paper. He drew a long tube that was the main body of the ship, as well as two long rockets on either side and one big rocket at the bottom. Then he drew a cockpit, which is where the astronaut sits. He picked out a bright red crayon and coloured in the rockets so it was nice and colourful. He reached down to his drawing, picked the rocket up off the page, and placed it on the windowsill ready to fly out the window. Hmm, I think I see a slight problem, said the astronaut. I floated all the way up to the ceiling. How do I get down to the rocket? I know, said Cece. I've got just the thing to help. And she picked out a bright yellow crayon and drew a big yellow balloon with a long string that wound around and around on the piece of paper to make it longer and longer. The balloon popped up off the page and began to float towards the ceiling with the long string hanging down. Once the balloon reached the ceiling, Cece called up to the astronaut, Grab hold of the string and you can use that to pull yourself back down. So the astronaut bounced over to the string, grasped it in one hand, and began to make his way back down, down, down until he finally reached the floor. Jackson bent down, picked up the little astronaut, and carried them over to the rocket ship that awaited them. Thank you for your help, said the astronaut. It's nice to know there's people like you out there with the friendship to help, the imagination to think up new ideas, and the cleverness to make them work. If you ever decide to become an astronaut, you'd both make really great ones. Jackson was delighted. He'd always wanted to become an astronaut, so to hear that from an actual spaceman was brilliant. The astronaut climbed up the side of the rocket and into the cockpit, closing the lid. Five, four, three, two, one, lift off! And the spaceship began to rumble and shake, then bright Orange, yellow and red flames of crayon began to shoot out of the rockets and then whoosh! The rocket flew out of the window at an enormous speed, leaving a trail of grey crayon smoke behind it. Up into the air it flew, off to explore the furthest reaches of outer space. Jackson watched the rocket until he could see it no more. He turned to Cece and said, That was so cool! Let's think of something else to draw. 
Cece knelt down by the box and pulled out a bright green and a dark green crayon. Then she pulled out a red crayon, a yellow crayon, and a purple crayon. She began to doodle. She drew a body with tiny little arms and a long tail, a big head with little eyes and big teeth. All along the back of the creature were spikes. Cece had drawn a dinosaur. The dinosaur had green scales with a yellow belly, it had purple spots all over it, and the spikes running down its back were red. But again, because it had been drawn on a piece of paper, it was a very little dinosaur. It only came up to Cece's waist. The dinosaur stood up from the piece of paper and looked around, blinking. Then it leaned back, looked up, and let out a little... Brah! Cece and Jackson giggled. A normal dinosaur's roar would have been really scary, but this tiny little dinosaur's one was just cute. And then it bolted off around the room. It ran very fast for such a little dinosaur. It was bumping into everything, knocking things over, making big crashing noises. It ran past Jackson and into the cupboard where it boshed and bashed around, pulling down clothes that were hanging on the rail. Then it ran over to the chest of drawers, put the handle in its mouth and pulled backwards, opening the drawer. It jumped inside, throwing out t-shirts, dresses, dungarees, trousers, and even pants. It was making such a terrible mess everywhere. Oh no, said Cece. Why did I think that a dinosaur would be a good thing to have indoors? Quick, we have to stop it before it makes a mess out of my entire bedroom. Jackson ran over to the chest of drawers to try and pick up the little dino, but it jumped out and ran straight past him to Cece's toy box. It tipped the toy box over and began to throw the toys around the room. It was raining teddies and toy trucks. It then ran over to Cece's bed, and with an enormous jump, it bounded on top of it. It picked up the pillows and began to toss them this way and that, pulling the bedsheets off too. Cece's mum had asked her to tidy her room, but this little dinosaur was making a complete mess of it. There must be a way to stop it, she cried. I'll try, said Jackson. But Cece put her hand on his shoulder, stopping him, and said, No, this is my problem, and I created it. I need to be the one to clean it up. So Cece came up with a plan. She picked up four bits of paper and laid them all next to one another on the floor. Then she picked up the biggest black crayon she could find, and across the pieces of paper she drew a big net with a long stick. She reached down and picked up the net off the paper. It was very long and the net was very wide. The tiny dino hopped off the bed and scurried underneath it to hide. Right, said Cece. You need to go round one side of the bed and I need to go on the other side. Then you crawl under the bed to chase the dinosaur out and when it runs away from you, I'll be on this side ready to catch it in this net. So they positioned themselves on either side of the bed and when Cece nodded, Jackson dropped down to the floor on all fours and crawled under the bed which made the dinosaur bolt out from underneath it. Cece swung down with the net right on top of the dinosaur, who was trapped. We did it, she shouted. But now that they'd caught the little dinosaur, they didn't know what to do. What do you do with a tiny dino that doesn't want to be trapped in a net? It was wriggling and trying to scramble out. They needed to think of something fast before it chewed its way out of the net. There must be something in that box which tells us how to make it stop, said Cece. Quick, go and have a look. Jackson looked around inside the box. He was picking up crayons and looking right in the corners, but he couldn't find anything to help. There's nothing in here. The only thing I can see are some words on the lid, he called over to Cece. What do the words say? Cece called back. Jackson got a closer look at them and read them out loud. Oogly boogly woogly woo! And with a puff of smoke, the dinosaur disappeared into thin air along with the net. The room was suddenly very quiet without a mini dino running around it. That must be the magic word, said Cece. We did it! Well done, us! Thanks for your help, Jackson. I couldn't have done it without you. And that astronaut was right. You really would make a great space explorer. Jackson gave Cece a thumbs up and said, he was right about you too. I think you would make the best captain of a rocket ship. But they were interrupted as Cece's mummy opened the door and looked around in shock. 
What on earth is all this mess? Cece turned to her mummy and said, Well, you're never going to believe it. And that is the end of this adventure. Thank you so much for joining me on that adventure. What was your favourite part of the story? I think my favourite part was when the astronaut went shooting off into space. Maybe you could use your imagination to draw something. I'd love to see what you make. Maybe you could even write a story of your own. If you're enjoying Tall Tales with Alex, don't forget to tell your friends about it. It would be amazing to share these journeys with even more children. There's loads more adventures to go on, so don't forget to subscribe and follow to be the first to find out when a new story is ready to listen to. Parents, guardians, teachers, you can find me at Tall Tales Alex on Twitter and Tall Tales with Alex on Instagram. I'm already looking forward to our next adventure. I'll see you then.